everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and Christian's with me and welcome back to our Merry Little Cryptmas. And today we are switching from Christmas to winter adjacent horror and boy do we have one that's going to chill your bones today. A very big surprise. So if you want to hear what me and Sparky have to say about a little film called No Exit that was released earlier this year, stick around. I feel like maybe it's just the chair. I feel like I'm. I, I feel like an old granny. I need like a cane to go <laughs> bat the children, or it's, I guess is the audience. I need to go bat them with a cane and teach, teach them what's for. Um. Yeah. No. Never mind. Never mind. That has nothing to do with the movie. Never mind that. Um. So no exit. This is a film that uh, we were not when we were drafting up uh, the list of movies we wanted to talk. Thought about talking about for this little. Uh, 12 Days of Christmas, Christmas, whatever the fuck we were going to call this series. Um, we, this was one that was not in the running. We had a different movie lined up, but low-key, we checked out that movie and I was going to sleep. it didn't really click with us too much, so we had to find an emergency one. We pulled up a list of winter horror, and this was on there, and it reminded me, oh yeah, this came out earlier this year. It has a winter theming, and I heard interesting not like super great stuff about it. it was like on average like on letterbox like two and a half to three stars but i thought the poster was cool and it's done by a director we just talked about it recently at the time uh damien powers who was the director of killing ground for who, for anyone who remembers us talking about that earlier in the year so that kind of I'm generally interested in this flick but kind of went in without really knowing anything about it this movie and i'm glad we did because yes that's this, the way to go into this film this movie was a big a pleasant surprise and I hadn't heard about this film. I, Christian uh, was the one who brought this to me and I was like, okay, let's check it out. And boy, this movie not only sucks you in very fast and the premise is very simple, but I'm not saying simple as a negative or a con. I'm saying that in a very, sometimes simple is the way to go. And that is one of this movie's strengths. And also what I really like about this movie, the acting is all great and all the actors really bring in subtle little touches, but really add a big insight to all their characters but the other thing this movie is minus our main character and our marine character all the other characters are shades of gray really and even I, our main character is too at a point to a point she is but we pretty much we kind of she's at a crossroads i guess you could say she's at an interesting crossroads but pretty much everybody in this movie sans our marine guy what you see is what you get with him but besides him every character in this movie and i mean every character Character. There are shades of gray, and this movie zigs where you think where a normal movie would zag. This movie is phenomenal. I loved it. This is a great example of like like you were saying, very simple film, and like both in the in like a writing standpoint and a lot of filmmaking choices, it never does anything like super grandiose or really like takes any major risks. But that comes off as an immense payoff because it is a great example of like. Like, of both being like a master of none, really good at everything it does, but it does plot a few really cool little writing tricks and some really cool filmmaking tricks towards the end of the film. Yes, this movie is nice touch the movie. There's just, it's particularly, I, I've said this earlier in this review and I'm going to say it again, these actors, and it's not, the performances, they're phenomenal, but they, none of them are hemming it up. They're all doing it quietly in an understated way, but every one of them, like you get insights and I feel in lesser actors hands you wouldn't get these insights because remember what i said all these characters sans the marine are very much shades of gray kind of people and like the ones that are really bad there it's not so it's not so simple it's very complicated but they don't make the movie overly complicated it just shows people are people are people and i'm always fascinated when we get interesting characters and this movie has that this movie the writing is super strong and i don't mean to cut no. you off but one other thing and this is really why i I feel it qualifies for our winter adjacent horror. This movie, the way it's shot, there is some gorgeous scenes in this movie, and the movie also just when you're watching it, the, you know when you're in, you, there's so many snow shots. We're set, we're setting in a snowstorm, and you just you feel the cold biting into your yeah, bones. Yeah, no, the movie has a very good like almost capturing the same feel as stuff like uh, say The Shining, uh, Shining does of like the, 
outside is just like complete and utter death basically around you. They're the, just the elements and the sheer, uh, sheer cold of everything. So you just feel like you, you are completely stuck inside the, this visitor center and there's no really other option but to stay here for the entire night. Like it, it does that really damn well. It really does because not only are the characters dealing with you, you think you're having a bad day. You're not, a, you have one character who's just dealing with dr uh, drug addiction and like crippling drug addiction. She's totally fucked up her whole life and then she gets a phone call from her sister saying mom's in the hospital but don't come and again and that right there that line and it's early in the movie that told me okay this movie knows what it's doing because in a lesser film you might think oh that's really harsh but coming from someone who had a you know a parent that was uh, was alcoholic not drugs but an alcoholic parent you get so tired of their bullshit sometimes when a major crisis happens you would say that in, into an, a person who doesn't dip, come from that kind of family you might think it's harsh but the sister goes you're just gonna make it worse mm -hmm. and i thought that is such a smart insight it, it's a really good it's a really good like low-key line of the film and yeah like you like you said that's how we, our movie opens up she's in rehab uh presumably she did so, uh, something the movie's very vague as to what led her here but and I it's like either that. rehab or she's going to prison so she has to be there but her mom's just in the hospital probably going to die so she just breaks out of rehab steals uh, steals her uh, steals her um steals her sponsor's car, who, which happens to have a little dime bag of cocaine in it, which does come up later in the film. But I also like that, like her sponsor's, like, look, you, you know, gotta take I, it I, I was, Yeah, I was, I was here at your place, but I'm better now. I've moved on past my addictions and stuff, and he still has like a fucking dime bag up in his visor. It's a nice little thing that, like, again, the movie has a lot of these little moments where it never draws a lot of attention to it, but just like believable little th uh, things like this. But she's uh, she's trying to rush home to uh, Salt Lake City, and lo and behold, since it's we're talking about this is a winter horror. Yeah, massive fucking snowstorm that completely shuts down the highway and she has to go and hide out at this visitor center for the entire night and uh, and get to know these uh, the, this group of four other complete and utter randos. And also, lo and behold, one of their cars, she doesn't know whose, but one of their cars has a child uh, duct taped in the back of it that she has to try to, uh, to try to rescue and figure out whose car it is and who she can trust. And that's just the first act. Then the movie gets insane, but I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, and I mean, that's a hell of a premise. And again, you think you're having a rough night. You're trying to deal. She, she finds the coat bag. Does she take it? Does she not? Then she hears her sister's words. You're just going to make it worse. She's trying to get to her mom. It is a life and death situation. Snowstorm comes, says, fuck you. You're not going to get to your mom. You got to stay here. She's with these people. You don't know them from Adam, except one of the, even from the start, one of these one guy's guys. One guy super creepy. Super sus, as you could say. But again, the movie does something really interesting with his character. We'll get into it in a minute but you know and, but she's just it's just like the world is like fuck you tonight and like she's trying to do the honorable thing and it's just really really good this is like and it just sucks you in yeah, also no absolutely like this is like one of the best uh like crime thriller mystery films i've seen it in an incredibly long time like this is up there with like some like walk among the tombstones and stuff or being like one of the best like sleeper crime thriller mystery films that i've seen in a really damn long time it's it, it does like again it doesn't like it doesn't do like say a fincher film or like it's both the good and the bad fincher films in my opinion which it became a very bad problem with him later in his career but like the big surprise like oh you, you twist at the end of the movie that changes the how you see the entire thing film. Uh, it never does anything like that. It stays and sticks to its guns for the entire f uh, film and never really like, but it tells a compelling enough story where you're like, yeah, okay, I'm here for this. And then when it does throw in a slight twist here and there, but nothing major, you're like, okay, I'm surprised here because the movie kind of lulls you into a false sense of security because the movie does reveal early on which one of the characters the car belongs to. It reveals and it's the most obvious one you could think of. It's the, you'll see, you'll know exactly which one that car belongs to really early on and you'll think, okay, what are we doing here? This is so predictable and hackneyed. You and then thought the, that. Yeah, and then the movie does a nice little slight twist on it. It kind of, it kind of lowers your expectations almost, into, I don't know if it was an intentional thing or what, but either way, it's done really well. It lowers your, you go in like kind of, the movie kind of lowers your expectations a little bit as it's like, okay, this is so telegraphic 
choreographed and predictable. And then it kind of surprises you with how competent it's done throughout the rest of the way. And again, slight little surprises here and there, and really damn good acting, and some really tight writing and direction. There's some gorgeous cinematography also towards the end of the film. There really is. This movie really will, after, after we get kind of the one reveal and you think, oh gosh, what are we going to do here? The movie starts zigging where you think it'll zag. And again, remember what I said, booze and ghouls, this is a movie where the characters are all shades of gray. And my hat's off to these actors because each and every one of them, and it's not that big of a cast. We, no, ha we have five a, characters. We have a married couple. Six technically because of the girl. We have a married couple who is who is who is who's go who's on their way to Reno, and um, that they they just want to get to Reno. He's a retired Marine, which will also play a thing in uh, or later down the road. And his wife, who used to be a nurse, and then we have the this one good-looking kind of guy that's kind of charming, and then we have this really creepy sus guy that you know there's something off Constantly about him. Edge. And you think you have all of these characters pegged, and in some ways you do, but in some ways you don't. And these actors add little touches. Like, when you learn about the sus guy, yeah, there's problems. Mentally, there's there's problems. Like, emotionally, there's some damage there to him. But he also, you kind of realize he's very, I'm not going to say slow, but he's a little childlike in his way of thinking, and you realize he's not such a bad person. Just life has kind of thrown him into an interesting situation. And then you think our handsome guy he might be the hero is he the hero or does he have a secret and the movie does something really interesting with them and we do something very interesting with our couple and I yes. don't want to get too into it but God every one of these characters just add a little touch to it, them it's a really great like ensemble mystery film really like it does it does everything it does really damn well and really goddamn confidently like especially coming off like granted i forgot that the, that powers was the director behind this when we went in to watch it but like after hearing seeing his name i was like oh yeah right but like comparing this to killing ground which we reviewed earlier in the year and which was his first film like a lot of people hype that movie up as being like a super like hidden gem of like disturbing cinema and both of us if you saw that review will know we were both kind of lukewarm lukewarm towards that film and thought it kind of played a little too closely uh to a a lot of its tropes and didn't really shake things up too much whereas this film like also doesn't do that a lot but it's so damn competent in everything it does like there's nothing in this film you could really point out as being like a really particularly terrible or really like cliched like that I don't feel like it doesn't make up for in another way. Like, the movie, it does really good. Like, a lot of good cat and, the, cat and mouse stuff of, like, who, who to trust and whatnot. It does that really damn well early on in the film. And I think that's absolutely exemplar in exa and I think there's a, a great example of that is an early on scene of all the characters playing cards. Yes. That scene like basically sets up the entire movie for you if you really pay a lot of uh, pay a close attention like how the characters react or act during that uh, that card scene. That scene's I think the standout of the film. That scene's really damn great. It really is. And also I got to go back to the characters because again, like I said, all these characters are shades of gray. Sans our marine guy, but actually our little girl, our victim. I like what the movie does. Oh, with she's her such character. a bitch. She's such a little bitch. Like she's, you know, it's horrible, and she, and, and to top it off, she's got like a, a a a condition. Like when she gets stressed, the adrenaline can literally kill her. She can, it again, it kind of parallels with the other thing, a drug overdose. Literally, her body's giving it to her and stuff. And you find out something about the little girl. Like it doesn't change it. It sucks. She's in the situation, but again, it shows that she's not just this sweet, innocent little we, girl. We get, we get to, character we get to see a scene of like of the scene of her getting kidnapped. Um, um, and there's a great moment beforehand of her, her like belittling and tor or torturing the fucking help to do a stupid TikTok dance because she knows she can because she's a spoiled rich little ba uh, bitch of a character and I love the, uh, the way they did that scene I, I like how that ties into another character in the movie I really that like I saw the, a lot of the other twists. I did not see what they were going to do with that character's uh, correlation to the little girl at all. Like, that was such a good damn reveal. Because, you know, like, like people are people are people. And yet, I mean, it doesn't take anything away from the little girl. It still sucks. She's still scared out of her mind. And all these other scenes you see her but crying. She's such a cunt. And scared out of her mind. And when we get this other flashback scene to her, it's like, oh, wait, not, a, not a, you know, kids aren't angels all the time. Even if they're yours, you know, there's days where you're super proud of them and there's other days 
phase where you're like, God damn, what am I doing wrong here? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all like that. And, and this is like, it really shows the duality. That's where I think this movie is really smart in its character study because all of these characters, they all have, even, even our most reprehensible one, when he is tending because he has a connection with another character and you see that there's a bond and he might not give a shit about anything except the money except this one character, which also comes full circle. Yeah, no, like, this is just a, like I keep saying, this movie, what it may lack in, like, grandiose genre-defining surprises or anything, or twists or anything, it makes up for with just a sheer competency in basically every single thing it does. Like, this is a great example of just, yeah, it doesn't do, it's not, like, the greatest thriller or the greatest mystery film of all time. It's damn good. But though. it's so competent in everything it does. Like, it's just such an enjoyable time. It is. It's not a movie you're going to be bored with. It's the perfect runtime. You care about these characters. And like I said, I love that you, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to be vague because I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but all these characters, Sans are, and the Marine guy you really like. Like, you, yeah. he's, he's meat and potatoes. You see what you, now he's a character you won't get any surprises with, but he's, but he's our earnest. He's yeah, like he's, our conscious of the movie. Yeah, the, char the character to, like is pretty likable, plus the actor who gives a really good performance. It's the Allstate guy, um, and he gives a really good a performance great, in this. An yeah, amazing, he's a character actor. But. An amazing character actor. I really love every, I love this movie. I am so glad we saw it, and I'm really glad that we're like reviewing it, because I haven't heard anyone else talk about it, and I can hear some people say, well, this sounds more like an action thriller. Yeah, it does, but trust me. Crime there, mystery thriller. There are some scenes that I think will make some oh, people that yes. are on the squeamish side oh. go, oh, Oh, oh yeah, for, for any gore hound or body horror fan, like there's some good gnarly bit moments towards the uh, towards that last 20 minutes of the movie. The movie does pull out some pretty good effe you know, effects. Like if you like, it, and that's where it really shows. Like you can see um, the Killing Ground influence coming into this film because that was the thing that Killing Ground did do really damn damn well. Of like really fucking good, just gnarly, cringy body horror. Like of just of just people getting like mutilated. Like this movie also does that really damn well. Power has a great talent for, uh, for how to capture that stuff in film. But what I really love about this is while there is some really I, and there isn't as many as in Killing Ground. No, not at all. But the ones that they are they're going to make you squirm. Even us even us really extreme jaded motherfuckers are going to go god damn. But also I like it because it still fits in the story and in the narrative like these things would happen if this was actually happening and this would be totally believable mm -hmm. and I really like that. And there's so much other things I'd love to talk about but I feel we would hit to spoilers yeah. and the best way to watch this movie guys is don't watch spoilers just go in blind apparently this was based off of a book and i believe the uh the author's name was uh taylor adams yes taylor adams i have not read the book but it, i am getting it on my kindle tonight because i want to see if the book is as good as the movie because if it is goddamn, it's gonna be a good read yeah. even knowing the things that yeah, i know no, this does it. feel like it'd be just a really good like cozy not winter novel honestly like cozy uh, co uh, cuddle up by the fire and just read a good book this uh, that's this kind of does if the movie does kind of feel like that it would make a really good book for that yeah it really does and this is a movie i am very impressed with and I, although i am kind of going god damn because any years coming up and i'm like god this this is a contender for my best list i'm not gonna say it's on my best list but god damn it's a contender that's how much i like this movie and i don't have room damn it there's always honorable mentions though, but this was this this is how good this movie is. This late in the game, I don't like to add so many, but this one might I might have to move some stuff around. That's how impressed I was with this movie. My uh, letter rating for it is an A, a solid A. This is a fun time. You can make the argument that it's not super super horror, but I think those last few gory scenes in it make it make it a horror, and it's it you're never gonna be bored with it. The actors all give really great touches, and you get really good characters. Yeah, absolutely. Study. It's an amazing film. Absolutely. A, 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 solid A. Positive for me, really damn strong in all fronts. Like I said, like it's it, it's nothing that's gonna amaze you or like be anyone's favorite movie of all time. But it's gonna surprise you with how fucking competent. Cause like you go in think, hearing like some of the stuff, and especially like especially since like a lot. Like I said, I I, I only knew about this film through like let, seeing people logging on Letterbox back in February, and the average rating was like threes, twos and a two and a half and stuff. So I didn't go in with like a super high expectation with this film and it damn surprised me of how competent it is at every single fr uh, front of it like this is a great example of just movie to c 
uh, throw a uh, throw on, get uh, get under a blanket, and just kind of chill on a cold winter night. Like this is a great example of that kind of film. Yeah, this is the perfect film for that. This is definitely one if you have not seen it and you got a you got a few hours to kill a night to kill. This would be a great movie. It's something new. It's something fresh, and it really does bring that bitterly cold that just chills you down into the bones. There there's some great and there's some really great effects with the snow and with fire and with blood there, and you mix all those elements together and it's just a beautiful thing and it gets inside your head yeah like, no there's some really great visual towards the end of the film like like definitely if, if the movie's not doing it for you stick with it a while like yeah that that first act is like sans the card scene is pretty even more so than the rest of the film very cliche and very by the books and you'll see a lot of stuff coming but the movie does pull out some really cool surprises and tricks throughout the rest of the film so i would definitely stick with it after that first act yeah i i i, I even like the first act like i oh, I do too. I bet the card scene's great, but I can see you know, some people saying like, "Oh, that is," because even admittedly me, if we weren't doing this for the channel, and I just saw this randomly on cable, even though it's a streaming film, but I pulled it up on streaming or something, and I just uh, see that th uh, first act like, "Okay, I see everything this is going through." I'm just gonna like fast forward through this to see how I'm proven right. Like, no, the movie does actually really do some cool stuff towards the end, of the, towards the film. It really does. Like I said, this was a very pleasant surprise. I love it when we do discover these little un un undiscovered gems on the channel and I loved bringing it to you guys because like I said I hadn't heard of this film at all and I'm really glad and this is the perfect time of the year if you kind of don't want a holiday film but you want to get that winter aesthetic and this is the perfect one and like I said all the actors did such an amazing job and the director had just some beautiful shots this whole film just works really perfectly and I'm very excited to read the novel I'm very curious about the novel that's going to be on my Kindle tonight yeah so with all that out of the way I think that is all we have to say about no exit except go see this one check this one out this one is going to be a pleasant surprise for you guys i think and with all that out of the way booze and goals we thank you so much for watching we hope you enjoyed this review and if you're new around here and do happen to like the contents of this channel please hit that subscriber button because we do appreciate every subscriber we get and with that that concludes another one of our little merry little christmas days so another day down but we will be back coming at you tomorrow with another more christmasy we you know this one was kind of wintry we need to get back into the festive la 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 so tomorrow we'll go have a crazy Santa or some sort of holiday frightivities. Oh, that was good. Frightivities. Wee! Wait, frightivities. Jesus, nativity. Does that mean we can do horror movies about Jesus? No. Dude, I got a movie about zombie Jesus. No, that next classifies. year. Next year. Okay, Bye, fine, guys. Next year we're doing zombie Jesus <laughs> week. F fuck Christmas movies. We're doing nothing but zombie Jesus movies. Oh, fuck me. Goodbye.